in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Facebook, Vimeo, and MySpace, and perhaps some other places. I'm known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Number Seven, your brother. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Please excuse me as I uh, begin this particular topic, this presentation. I, I've been feeling a bit under the weather, but I wanted to and I just have to make this particular video. Hopefully, maybe that it could inspire us or cause us to rethink our position so that we will know what is best for us not for me not for you not for I for we we who are the descendants of slaves born in America it is not about what I want as far as this ministry is concerned it is not what you should want for your individual organizations or for your individual self. If we are here and if we are talking about black people, if we are talking about the, the descendants of slaves born in America, then we should be looking out for the best interest of we, not I or you, but us, we as a people in this country called the United Snakes of America. I make this video because I am inspired. It is very inspirational to listen to you, those of you who say that you are awakened, not sleepwalking, because sleepwalking is giving us the illusion of somebody that is awake. You are sleeping, but you don't know what you're doing, but you look like you look like you're awake. So if you are truly an awakened person, if your mind, if you believe that you can see, if you believe that somebody made you able to hear where at one time you was deaf, and now you can walk, at one time you were crippled and now you walk, some Jesus have come to you and made you well. So now, we must take our wellness. All those who claim that we are well, we must bring ourselves together, our resources, our knowledge, our skills, so that we can awaken the masses of our people of whom we all agree they are made deaf, dumb, and blind. They are handicapped. They need a Jesus or saviors, not just savior, but saviors to uplift them from the dead, make them like Lazarus of the scriptures, Raise them up from the dead. Bring that dead to life. No other time in history is it more important to bring those who are dead mentally from up out of the grave. So I am inspired to bring this, these few words. So in hopes that we can keep this going and not only keep it going, but reach out to your brothers and your sisters and let us form an umbrella, not just an organization, not just an individual, but form an umbrella and let us fall under one umbrella so that we can wake up this nation of dead people who are sleeping lions. And we know that analogy about the, the sleeping lion. But I want to say that I just uh, spent a few hours not just a few minutes, I spent a few hours listening to Brother Umar Johnson, Dr. Umar Johnson, our psychiatrist, a real psychiatrist, a real psychologist, not that those fakes that I had to deal with for 10 years, and my brother uh, Polite, listen to them for hours. 
and brother uh, polite and I agree with this young brother he said we must stop agreeing to disagree I agree to disagree what that's confusion that's nonsense and for you and I for those of you who are Muslims you know that Allah is not the author of confusion what sense do that make well I disagree to disagree with your brother no you must and we must come to some type of conclusion we must agree on something you can't always be going to the north you can't always be going to the south or the, or the east or the west when you're looking and trying to get somewhere you must come to some agreement where you want to go otherwise you stay lost you have to regardless to where you're going it could be the wrong direction but we must come to some agreement where we want to go or if you are dining out what do you want to eat or if you want to go on vacation where you want to go you can't agree to disagree this continues to hold us down and we've been down long enough I oh man I'm I'm so fired up I don't feel well but I these brothers listening to these brothers just give me this energy and, it, and it's an energy that must not just be uh, happen or occurs when you listen to a video, but it must be an, an energy that causes us to want to act on what we have learned. Dr. Umar Johnson said that many of us, we praise and we honor the Honorable Marcus Garvey but what we don't know about the UNIA is that it was just not his idea but it was a collaboration of ideas under one umbrella it was just not one organization that's why Marcus Garvey was so successful that's why he became the first mega organization for us within this racist society even though this society puts so many obstacles in our way. Do you know? Oh, do you know? Do you know? Woo! It is so much knowledge. It is so much wisdom. Y'all are some smart people, but we're not smart enough to bring ourselves together. So that makes us dumb. That makes us stupid. So if you're not willing to reach out and come up under an umbrella with your brothers and sisters no matter how smart you talk no how no matter how intelligent that you are you still look dumb because the oppressor the enemies all those who hate us they say what they do well they say what they say and they do what they do because they know they don't have to worry about us as a people because this brother is doing his own thing that sister is doing her own thing. This organization, y'all doing y'all own thing. But the enemies who hate us, the enemies that exploit us, the enemies that take advantage of us, they do it as a group. And, and they parasite off our blood. They are the ticks that jump on us and suck our blood. And because we are in our own little tiny worlds and because really clearly you must don't love black folks because the only way we can we can get out of this condition is to unify and bring all our knowledge all our understanding just like brother polite said everybody got something to offer we take a little bit of this and take a little bit of that and and among us let's make a melting pot a real melting pot one person one organization no matter how beautiful you talk no matter how successful an individual or organization is you are limited you cannot change we as a people but we together all our powers come together our resources don't you know brothers and sisters that the descendants of slaves born in America don't you know that you and I we are the richest, the most comfortable, the most intelligent, the most knowledgeable, oppressed people 
that have ever existed? Now, how can those who were poor, those who were under more horrific circumstance, how come they were able to gain their freedom and independence while having little, much less than we have, and here we are continuing on and on talking about, and we don't have this and, and don't have that because we refuse to unite our resources, and that's something they did in the Chinese rev Revolution. That's something they did in the Russian Revolution, the French Revolution. There was some type of unification. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said back in 1984, he told us that unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. Don't you know? They fear your unification as long as everybody's doing their own thing, saying and, and whatever, doing their own thing. They don't fear you, but they fear your unification. And it don't take a whole lot of us because when a certain amount of us get together and the people see that our head is straight, they don't come with you. The reason why our people is not coming with you. The reason why our people is not with us is because there's too much confusion and God, and since our people, God is in them, God is not the author of confusion. And also, it says in the scriptures that my sheep know my voice. We're not speaking God's language because God would want us to unify as one unit, as one people. And those of you who are believers in God, those were one people. They were not doing their own thing. They were under one umbrella. God's children, not God's red children, not God's black children, God's Hebrew children, God did. They became God's children under one umbrella. And then God led them out of their oppression. So that's what we must do. That's what we must do. If you don't, you must be aware and be careful of those blacks who don't want black unification, who don't want to come up under umbrella. Those who don't want to see other brothers and sisters do well. The jealousy and envy. We have to watch ourselves. Because there are brothers and sisters who are out looking for self-grandizement. They're not looking for the, for the best interest of the whole. Unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. Thank you for listening. Jot down, our, jot, jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. This is your brother, the mighty Angel Snub Nub 7. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk with us about a little incident that I just experienced. And the subject of this particular video is what do we deem what do we consider? What do we call friendship? Exactly what is friendship? What do you expect from a friend? Now for me, friendship simply is like brother and sisterhood. You want for your brother, you want for your sister as you want for yourself. Treat one as you want to be treated. It's very simple. But as you know, we live in a very selfish society. We live in a materialistic society. We live in a society where so many of us, we suffer from low self-esteem. And we are willing to sell our souls so that we can have some type of attention so that we might have value because we don't have value on ourselves. So as a woman, I need to sleep with every man that I can to get that attention, even though I know it is negative attention, but I need that attention 
because I have no value on myself. As a male, we do the same thing. I want to brag to my quote-unquote friends that I got it going on because I sleep with Bessie and Sally Ann and Shaniqua and I'm just a player player. I'm a pimp. We view ourselves low at the same time we want to put ourselves up in a high place but that what we value as high is really low. What is a friend? I want to talk about my loss of a Facebook friend. And they, what is the word, defriend? They defriended me because of a comment that I made. This young lady I've known for a few years. Young lady that I met on a job. And I befriended this sister and her sister on the job. And we used to have hours and hours and hours of conversation about religious teaching since they claim to be Christians. And of course, I do not believe in God at all, but I am not an atheist. If you can show me clear and convincing evidence that God exists, I will accept that. I will accept that as a reality. However, even if you can show me that God is a reality, I will never bow down to God because there is no life greater than my own worthy of me bowing down to. That's my position. So, this young lady is a or make a claim that I'm Christian. And so what brought us to de-friendship, the reason why now she don't consider me a friend is because she wrote upon her Facebook page that men are tripping. I guess that's all men. That's how we talk. We always talk in, in generalizations. So men are tripping because she has a problem with finding love. And she continues to meet men, so-called men, just because they have a penis don't make them a man. But she continues to meet these males that view her as beautiful and wonderful when they first meet. But then when a better model comes along, then they dump her to the side. And this sister is very nice looking. She could be a model if somebody encouraged her to do that. And I did. I suggested to her that she, that she should be a model. She went to school to become an assistant to a lawyer. And I said that you can combine the two. You can be an assistant to a lawyer while you modeling. In fact, as time goes on, you could be a full-fledged lawyer and a model. I'm trying to encourage this young lady with quote-unquote Christian values to try to direct her towards the better way. But her behavior was non-Christian. Here's a Christian young lady, but you're going out to clubs in these short dresses, showing all your boobs. Is that how a Christian woman is supposed to act and behave? I told her what her future was going to be. I told her, I said, if you truly practice your Christian values, you will be all right. But if you don't, then you will have a baby before the age of 25 and you're going to be alone. You will continue this cycle that you see before us day in and day out. That is your future. 
because there's a consequence for ill behaviors. There's always a consequence for immoral and unrighteous behaviors, and you know better because you claim that you are a believer in Christ. So, she is not even 25 years old, and she has a baby that the father wants nothing to do with. No longer in school, drifting, getting promises from men who see this woman with a child and just wants to use her because they see that she is not very bright upstairs, suffer from low self-esteem, illiterate, not trying to seek any type of knowledge, whether it is religious or whether it is educational. So she goes on her page, men be tripping. And so my response is, you place no value on yourself. And so since you place no value on yourself, others did not place value on you. So now that is why you are in the condition that you are in. It ain't men that's tripping because these men are vultures. These men call themselves dogs. They call themselves pimps. So they are doing what they have programmed themselves to do. You as a Christian person should not have ever, ever fallen victim to the smile because you know these men, so-called quote men, know how to smile to get what they want. But you wanted that attention. You wanted somebody to love and then you ended up because because loving Jesus clearly was not enough for you. So she gets angry. So now I'm no longer a friend. So I'm no longer your friend because I tell you the truth. I'm no longer your friend because I was telling you and trying to encourage you to stay in school. In fact, I was telling you to go to church and learn your doctor. Learn how to get closer to the man you call Christ. So I'm not your friend, but you lay down with these men or man making babies out of wedlock like usual. And these are your friends. Those of whom care about you you defriend them and those who use you like toilet paper that's who you try to find love and comfort with just because i'm your friend do that mean i should kiss your backside does that mean that everything that you do i'm supposed to agree with it as a friend as a brother as somebody who care about you no matter if I see that you're doing something that's wacky and, and detrimental for your welfare, as well as the welfare of your new baby, I'm supposed to step up and tell you. But we don't want to be told nothing. And so this cycle in the black community that we suffer, it goes round and around and around. Suffering from low self-esteem. Give me some attention. So now the baby gives you attention. And instead of being a parent, the baby becomes your friend. When the baby needs a mother, the child needs a father, not a friend. And so that child will grow up and continue this pattern. But again, if you truly was a Christian person, a believer in Christ, you would not be on YouTube talking about men are tripping because if you believe in Jesus, he would have sent you the right man for you sooner or later. But you got to have yours now because you really don't believe in Jesus. You really don't believe in what you're talking about. Your actions show that. Has nothing to do to do with what I think. Your actions verify that you don't. 
but being your friend, you being my friend or your brother don't mean that I have to kiss your backside in order to be your friend. When I'm telling you the truth, when I'm telling you something that's good for you and you know that I can. But now that's all that's up on you. And we all suffer the consequence of our action. And I'm not telling you nothing that's wrong. With that said, jot down your comments. Do you have to do you have to kiss somebody's backside to be their friend? If you do, is that a friend? Jot down your comments. This is your brother Tony Even Raw. This was and is the Rally's Temple on Earth. Peace and respect you. Hey partners, this is your brother, the mighty Angel Snub Nub Seven. Just coming with us, uh, very casual. I want to take a few minutes to speak with uh, Caucasian people in America. I don't know about in Europe or any other place. I want to speak to the citizens, the Caucasian or white citizens of the United States of America. And I want to try to be as civil and respectful as possible in this conversation. Now, this um, opinion does not reflect all white people. But of course, it makes no difference whether or not that you make very clear that you're not talking about all those who can't defend their position, those who are covert, undercover racists, they are going to call you names and they're going to say that you are saying all white people regardless. But I'm very, I'm making it very clear. I'm talking to certain Caucasian people as many of my listeners were and have been and still today many of the those of whom listen to this ministry are white people but they are white people who understand exactly what I'm talking about because they don't view me as their slave see your problem is that you think that black people so-called African Americans you think or believe that the descendants of slaves born in America you still believe in the back of your mind even though you may never have owned slaves you think that for some reason black folks are supposed to listen to everything you say take your advice I am not your slave not only me there are many of, uh, of us who don't care about your advice I don't care about what you're talking about because you can't tell me about my experience now my personal experience would differ from what I present on on behalf of this ministry but as a people this is my reality this is what I see day in and day out I am not blind. I don't care about your rims. I don't care about your marijuana. I don't care about your beer. I don't care about your churches. I don't care about the things that you placed upon me to make me and keep me enslaved. I am not your slave. I don't care about what you wrote in some book. I don't care about your sciences. I don't care about your educational system. All the things that you desire to benefit you and to keep all dark people in a subservient position. I am not your slave. And that's what you cannot handle. You can't tell me. I see exactly what is being done to myself and my people within this nation. Been going on for 400 years. It has not stopped. These 
Many of our, my ancestors have gone in the streets crying and singing, we shall overcome and have yet to overcome. In fact, it has gotten worse because now it's undercover. You can't see it like you used to. At one time, white supremacy or white racism, it was in your face all right. Now you slick and you smile more. You know how to grin and skin while you're stabbing somebody in the back. I'm not your slave. You don't like me and brothers and sisters like me because we know that you are a liar. And once you lie in a court of law, under your own law, it's called perjury. Once you lie, nobody does not care about anything you have to say. You are a liar. This nation, your leadership, the people that in the white people in this country, you have shown and proven yourselves as untrustworthy and liars. You don't like to hear that, but your own history proves it. And you want to get angry at me because I'm bold enough to tell you in your face, you are a liar. You can't help it because white racism has become a way of life. You was born into it. You are a white racist and don't even know it. Racism would not have any type of power if, it, if, a, if a minority of white folks practiced it. It would mean really too much of nothing. But it is a way of life. It is in the court system. It is in media. It is everywhere that you go in this nation. That is my reality. It affects myself and my people. We know this. You can't come to me and tell me that it don't. You can't tell me about my experience. Now you have those blacks because they have some rims, some cupcakes, and they have some material things. So it's not the fact that racism does not exist. They are comfortable because they have some things to make them comfortable. It's just like Somebody putting, putting you on a fire, but somebody putting a pillow under your head to make you comfortable while yourself burn. Burn, baby, burn. But see, even Caucasian people, see, you are enslaved also, and many white folks are understanding that you are enslaved. But you have accepted your fate. So here I am, a black slave, a mistreated, oppressed person. You a slave. Why do I have the nerve to cry? Everything is all right because as a white person, I, I'm enslaved too. I am enjoying my slavery. How can you live in a nation? Now listen to me. How can you live in a nation of billion dollar corporations the people that control the corporation, you watch them on lifestyles of the rich and famous or whatever. Let's use McDonald's as an example. McDonald's brag that they are a billion dollar corporation, but they pay their employees minimum wage, barely give them benefits. How can you be a billion dollar corporation but you don't want to share the wealth with those who made it possible for you to get rich like that. That's slavery. A different kind of slavery. And then you brag about McDonald's. You praise them for, for, for being a slave owner. And then they sell you this all this cheap food that is designed to make you obese and make you sick and you feed it to your baby they get rich from giving you poison and paying you little or nothing to serve the average people on the street then you want to get angry at me because I'm telling you that not only am I facing that but I'm facing white supremacy can't we all just get along get along in what let us all get along in oppression so the poor, all the oppressed people, all the poor and the middle class people 
fight one among one another because somebody is trying to keep us satisfied in our slavery. Then we make entertainers rich. We make Jay-Z and Beyonce and Brad Pitt and Angelino Jalaka or whatever her damn name is. We make all these people rich. The only thing they do is acting, being fake. That's what they do for a living, being fake, singing and dancing, whatever. Because as a poor person, being a slave, your life and your and my life, miserable. So we use Jay-Z and Beyonce, Brad Pitt, Tommy, Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson and all these other folks. We use them like a drug to go into a fantasy world so we can forget our miserable lives for a few minutes. Then we turn to over -sexing. Then we fill our rooms with pornography, drugs, and, and alcohol. So we drive drunk every weekend, get drunk and beat your, beat your wife and beat your, beat your children. Can't you see all of this coincide with one another? How can you get angry at me when we are all under the same slave system except I'm on the very bottom? And some of y'all participate because you don't think that you are being used to oppress those Below you. Can we all just get along? Get along in what? In our slavery. So the white people, you are slave. But at least you know who you are. You have black folks. We are slave, but we have no idea. We think that we are white. So you see, Beyonce, I keep talking about Beyonce, I like Beyonce, but she bleaches herself. You have Michael Jackson. Trying to make himself look like a white guy. Little Kim. Nicki Minaj. You got all these. All of our sick. African American people. Who hate themselves. No jobs that look like Caucasian people. We are the ultimate slaves. All of, of our dollars. Go to help build. White folks communities. Asian communities. Everybody's community except our own. We are the sickest slave. So that's why I speak. That's why I do what I have to do in order to encourage my people to rise up. And you don't know it, but if the black man and woman of America, if you got out of the way and we were able to rise, you will, you will be able to rise too because we don't have the mentality like that. Greedy, selfish, we have a mentality of sharing the pot. Those of us who are real, there are those who have the these the mindsets of the racist people that's in power. They are greedy. I'm talking about those of us who know better, we want to do better. So it's not about hatred or being enemies. It's about this struggle. And if you're my brother or my sister, then you want for your brother what you want for yourself or are you a liar smiling in my face and wanting to stab me in the back John Daniel coming let's talk about this your brother Tali giving wrong this was and is the reality's temple on earth peace out in the name of my ancestors Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places. I am known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I want to thank you so much for joining me 
this uh, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you have decided to honor me with your presence upon this particular uh, video. It is an honor as always that you would give me a moment of your time so that I may be able to express an opinion that I feel that would be beneficial to us who have been made deaf, dumb, and blind, lost in a land among strange people doing strange things, and we're going to speak about that as this conversation continues. Those of us who are the descendants of slaves born in America. Now, I would like to begin our talk by first saying the topic is sex. I'm going to attempt to talk about this subject so that it is not vulgar, it is not nasty, it is just an adult conversation about that which or that activity which brought us all into being without the act of sex. I would not be here speaking with you, nor would you be here to listen to these words. So, the act of sex itself is a wonderful and beautiful experience if we understand what they say in religion is the spiritual or mental side, a higher calling or understanding of the experience. Because the experience itself brings us temporary satisfaction. So since it brings us temporary satisfaction, that's why we're always looking for it. That's all. That's why we're always thinking about it. Because once we get it and enjoy whatever pleasure we believe it is supposed to bring to us, it goes away quickly. So, like a drug, we're after our next fix. And in that uh, in that obsession with trying to find pleasure in the flesh. And just like a drug addict, we don't care who we hurt. In order to get our next high, the drug addict will rob their family members. They will steal. They will do whatever it takes to get the next fix. And that is what you see when we become a sex addicted people. When we are filled with sexual perversion. We even begin to seek out little children and babies to act our or try to get our high from. Babies and children that are not even mature enough to even know what you're doing to them. And then when these babies of whom you have destroyed grow up, they are gender confused. They are messed up in their head from an act of some demon trying to find pleasure in the flesh. This talk that we're having, and since this is a open forum, we are in the public speaking or talking to one another. 
I am sure there are people of all races that wish to listen to what is going to be said. But this message is not for you. Especially the European Caucasian. And I say this because we who are the descendants of slaves born in America, we were forced into your society. And that society is alien to us. The behaviors that I'm going to speak about could be considered natural or it is acceptable behavior in your society. Greek culture, according to Caucasian scientists, they say that the, the behavior of what we call homosexual behavior originate up out of Greek culture. It is a Caucasian European phenomenon. You cannot and you will not see instances or find information whereas darker people were practicing homosexual, bisexual, all these sexual, sexual behaviors. This is a phenomenon that is only relevant to European Caucasian persons. Again, that originate up out of Greek culture. And you don't have to believe nothing I say. This is what I learned from them. So if you want to get angry, don't get angry at Brother Talik. You need to get angry at the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, and your media, your scientists, your scholars, who are teaching these things. But since we do not like to educate our minds, we spend very little time watching the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, and all these channels that try to educate our minds. We are busy watching the Housewives of New Jersey, the Housewives of Atlanta. You are interested in what Kim Kardashian is doing. You are watching Chef Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen, and anything of entertainment that does not feed the mind. Now, I will admit, I like watching Chef Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen. You can learn how to cook a little bit. But overall, the media is feeding the masses of the people foolishness so that you don't know anything, so that you continue living in filth. And this behavior that I'm talking about can only be practiced by a people who have gone so low living in filth that this type of activity is acceptable. So homosexual behavior, origins from up out of Greek culture, and this is how I was listening to how they explain how um, homosexual activity began. And this is just part of it because it's a combination of things that have created the modern day gay and lesbian peoples. In Greek culture, in the beginning, it was an innocent thing for a male in order to show that he was of a certain high class. He would take on an apprentice or a helper, assistant, a young boy, take him in. This would show that I am a man of great wealth, a man of great stature in the community or in the society. But soon, these Caucasian males, the women were not involved at this particular time. It's always males that's doing some dirt. 
the males began to take their sexual perversions, their experimentations out on their assistants, their apprentice. Thus, I'm taking a boy as a friend. I'm taking a boy as a lover. Thus, you get the word boyfriend. At that time, there was no girlfriend. But later on, of course, when we begin to get equality, then you begin to have women that begin to molest children, boys and girls, and women would molest girls, then you would get girlfriend. And then, of course, when the Europeans began to conquer the African peoples or any dark people, they began to emulate and copy this perverted type of behaviors because they were raped and molested as children by their oppressors. And then, of course, even when we began to become free, then we continue that which these same behaviors that oppressed us. I can compare this behavior with incarceration. You have those who have been incarcerated, who have learned the style of the sagging pants. And then, once they come out on the street, they don't have to no longer do that. But this behavior is in them, and they take it out on the street. Being around incarcerated persons, expressing this behavior, then soon in society, it is a, it is an acceptable type of thing. And you have these young men running around with sagging pants. Some of them do know that it comes out of prison behaviors. And that it comes from up out of incarceration. But it is, it, is, it is now acceptable because in this society where homosexuality is acceptable and we know in prisons most times when you see a male with sagging pants that means he is available for anal penetration. That means he will bend over so that you can put your penis in his backside. That is what it is a sign of within the prison system. So here you are in the society and these young boys sagging their pants. And the reason why they can do that is because slowly but surely in the society, the male, both males, but the attack has been primarily on the black male to make you an infeminate, to give you woman-like characteristics to take the fire out of you, to take the warrior out of you, to take the soldier out of you, so that you will not stand for your people, so that you will not do that which will cause your people to evolve forward, but in fact cause your people to go backwards, in fact cause your people to go extinct because homosexual behavior does not produce life. And there are those who don't want black folks to have life. Would you be my boyfriend? My girlfriend? Why would you call a grown man a boy? Why would you call a grown woman a girl? Friend, the American black man, the descendants of slaves born in America, the African American, the Negro, the colored, y'all don't know what you want to call yourself. But we have been indoctrinated, we have been tricked, and we have been made to live an unnatural life that the African, in fact, to call ourselves African or black, that is unnatural. These things come up from up out of the white supremacist system. We have become 
Europeanized, and we are proud to be black. When you say that, you are really saying, I'm still proud to be a slave. If you say I'm African American, you're still saying that I'm proud to be a slave. And when you look at the behaviors of the people, you see a people who in fact continue to behave and act like slaves. But this is about sex. This is about making love. There is only one. Listen to me. There is only one sex, brothers and sisters. The only real sex, and it's very simple, is the penis penetrating the vagina. That produces life. Sexual intercourse is the penis going into the vagina. That is the only real sex. Anything other than the penis going into the vagina is not sex. That is perversion. That is what they used to call being a freak. Now listen to me. See, what is a freak? If you see a dog, and I'm using a dog because y'all have the minds of white people. White people love dogs. And I'm pretty sure y'all love dogs too. You probably have your little puppy dog right next to you as you watch this video. But if we were looking at dogs and you seen a dog with six legs, back in the day, they would call that a freak. That's a deformity. A freak of nature. So back in the day, when we was talking about doing certain things in the bedroom, and somebody would call you a freak. That means you was doing something that was abnormal. You was doing something that was freakish. You was doing something that was vile. You was doing something that was abnormal, deformed. I'm going to be a freak in the bed. So I'm going to do something unnatural. Deformed. And we know this, and we do it with a smile because we live among a strange people, a deformed people, an unnatural people, and we have become unnatural. So I'm not going to knock you. I don't hate you. I don't dislike you. But I am here to tell us that we have adopted nasty, vile, freakish, abnormal, deformed behavior. If you wish to continue that, then you do it with the knowledge of what it is and you don't try to justify your filthy ways like it is normal. Well, brother, <laughs> I was taught in school that oral sex, anal sex, and all this other sex sex is sex. The Caucasian European white men or Americans, they always use science. They always use some type of so-called education, philosophy, to justify their nasty, vile behaviors or whatever they want to do. So you have Masters and Johnson. You have a little old white woman What Dr. Ruth. Ain't that woman, ain't she about 200 years old? She's going to tell people about sex. You 200 years old. What, what do you know about sex? But she's a sex expert. You have these other white people. Masters and Johnson. They about 200 years old. They sex expert experts. And you have Dr. Drew and Dr. Phil. All these people are sex experts. But because homosexual. See let me tell y'all something. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this conversation, um, I don't want it vulgar, but sucking the penis and licking the vagina, that comes from out of, of European Western culture. That's homosexual behavior. Because since you're not going to put your penis in my vagina, what else you going to do? So I'm going to make up something. And see, 
Homosexuality comes from up out of incarceration and the exploitation of women and children. When a man tells you to suck his dick, he's not telling you, oh, I'm, I want to love you. To tell a person, suck my dick, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Let me say, suck my penis. Suck my vagina. Let us be technical. I didn't. I'm, I apologize, I don't want to go that way. But when somebody tells you this, it is not meant to show love, it's meant to degrade, to show that I'm superior, to humiliate, make mockery of you. When the demons molest and rape children, the children are not sexually mature. So the young boys can't get an erection. The little girls are not ready for no sexual intercourse. They make the little children suck the penis, lick their backside. The children can't do no better. This is where it's come from. Men do the same thing to grown women. Over generations and generations, men have abused females. Make the women suck their penis and lick their backsides. And all this, this is where, this is the origins of, this is the why. And incarceration. This is the why. Incarceration. You have men forced to live with other men. And you have women forced to live with other women. And they take their sexual frustration out on what is available. This is where homosexuality comes from. Some leave incarceration. And they return back to normal behaviors. But some, but some retain the behaviors that they... Uh, that, that was thrust upon them while incarcerated, just like the sagging pants. This is where homosexual, this is the origins and the birth of homosexual behavior. It comes from up out of Greek culture, combined with incarceration, combined with generations of children and women being exploited by men. It's always a man thing. Men cause this. At the root of it, men cause this. You can't find and you'll never find where it is a woman female thing because women produce life. Women are a respecter of life. But now, of course, many women, due to wanting equal rights, equal rights mean copying and see brothers and sisters. In the black conscious movement, black power, black nationalism, black liberation, you don't want to be like your oppressor. Because you see what has happened to women trying to copy men. In fact, women have tried to copy men so much, now some of these women begin to look like men and act like men, walk like men, talk like men. Their voice has deepened. Some of them losing their shape. They looking more manly. Some of them are taking steroids and these hormones to do that on purpose. Because I'm already losing my womanhood. I already think I'm a man. Might as well go all the way. Freaks of nature. You deform unnatural people. And of course they use science to justify their freakishness. There is only one sex. And I tell you again. If it don't produce life. It's not sex. It's perverted behavior. In fact it is called sodomy. Licking the vagina is sodomy. Putting the penis in your mouth is sodomy. And for y'all religious believers. Many of y'all do this homosexual stuff. What do you think? That your God was angry with. In the time of Lot. Because the homosexuals. Was practicing. This behavior. That does not produce life. 
and God is about giving you eternal life. So here you had a group or a mass of people what that was doing counter God. How can you say that you love your woman? Uh. <laughs> Woo! How, brother? How can you say you love your woman and won't and you want to put your penis in her mouth where you urinate and do other nasty things? But I love you. I want my I want my sperm and my sweat all over your face. How filthy and nasty and vile. And you got the nerve, you have the nerve to say that you love this person. I want to give you my waste product. I want you to smell my butt where I take a dump every day. Oh, what kind of love is that? And you wonder why these relationships don't last because they are born and they are rooted in physical things. In fact, physical, physically filthy and violent, profane things. Disgusting. Oh, y'all are woo, y'all yucky. Make love to me. Make love to me. I don't want to have sex. Make love to me. Brothers and sisters, you are so far from off the path of what the sexual experience is supposed to teach us. Not just give you pleasure because see, in religion it talks about Jesus. And Jesus is here to bring eternal life. Sodomy don't bring life. But if you understood sex, it can bring you life. And if you understood the spiritual side of that activity, then it could bring us eternal life. But you don't understand what the fictional Jesus is talking about. Yeah, he's fictional. But you can learn a lesson from the Bible and the Quran and many other places. The racist Caucasian scientists and scholars and, and the know-it-alls, they would tell you that in nature you see signs of homosexuality. You don't see, there is no homosexual animal on this planet. Homosexual Behavior is an unnatural behavior. What you see animals do is that certain animals are allowed to mate. And then, just like incarceration, the males begin to bond with the males and the females with the females, and then they begin to act out their sexual frustration out on one another. But after the mating season is over, they go right back to doing what they was doing. Animals are not like human beings who have learned to try to seek some kind of pleasure in sexual perversion. What is pleasurable? Ah! What is pleasurable about putting your tongue in somebody's anus? Oh, what is, that shows how filthy and low down and nasty we have become. Following behind a perverted, unnatural people. And you love it. But see, that's on you. But I'm not going to stand around and listen to your filth and not tell you about your filth. You stink and you dirty and you nasty and you foul. And I'm, that's what I'm going to tell you. Whether you like it or not, you can't handle the truth. This is the real truth that has come to us to let us know that we have been deceived. You're living an unnatural life. Mm, mm, mm. The reason why we have come this far is because of corrupt men. And I'm going to say that again because of corrupt men. The man 
the males have gone insane and and men cannot produce life so since men can't produce life they have no respect for life but they want to have the honor and the position of woman and so you're living in a world that has been born in it and it has been created by males who disrespect women. All your religions is anti-woman. Women can't do nothing of, of anything of any value. It's always about the man. The male, if you look at what has happened to this planet while men are in charge, the only thing you see is constant warmongering, murder, killing because these males cannot produce life and they don't have respect for life they don't care nothing about destroying the earth because this earth is known as mother earth they don't care nothing about nature because nature is considered mother nature it's about the woman it's about that which can produce life and you have corrupt males that is in charge of this planet that cannot produce life. They can help bring life. But see, the life that they bring into being, they want to enslave it. So all over this planet, you see signs of enslavement. The males, not the women, the males are behind enslavement. Then they enslave animals. They are about enslavement. That's because they have lost their way. They're trying to be the woman. But in order for you to be like the woman, you have to be able to produce life. And you can't do it, black man. You can't do it, white man. You can't do it, Chinese man. So their hatred for the woman, they try to force you to submit to them. They try to control the life because they can't produce it. Mm -hmm. Woo, these men and you women, you make a mistake. See, you have become sexualized because at one time, women did not Women did not trip off my orgasm. I got to do this because that's not you. You don't care nothing about that. You are interested. Your pleasure because you know that life brings you eternal life. You have a connection to the womb. A man does not have a connection to the womb. So he don't care about nothing. You always hear stories of women willing to risk their lives real quick to save their babies. Women don't mind taking custody of their children because women are the nurturers and, the, and can bring life into existence. You don't see men fighting for their babies. I, I just want my babies. I got, to have my, I got to have my children. You don't see that. You don't see men rushing trying to fight and defend their babies, especially in the black community, because if they did, we would be in much better shape. But you'll find black men at the dope house and the liquor store with their sagging jeans and drunk. They don't care nothing about life. That's why it's easy for you to see men in bad shape like that, because they are lifeless. But in religion, you have a person called Jesus that come among those who are dead and raise them to life. Woo! If you only could understand what that meant because Jesus is here. But Jesus is not one man. Jesus is a people 
that have been given certain information to raise not only themselves, but the masses of humanity, bring them from a dead state, a filthy state, bring them to life. It's not going to be easy because it says in your revelation that this war of Armageddon, a great fight, has to occur in order to bring the people back to this God. It also says that only 144,000 will be saved. So I'm not shocked that many of you will reject my message and disagree with what I'm talking about. Because many will go down in hell with the devil. But see, you're already living in hell. The purpose now is to go high. That's why we all that's why we want to get to heaven because heaven represents a higher place. Hell represents a lower place. You can't mess with me because I'm in a higher place. I'm beyond the flame, I'm beyond the fire. That's why you can't touch this. No matter how hard you try, no matter how smart you think you are, no matter how fly, and you really can't do nothing with me with all that urine and feces dripping out of your mouth. Sex is a beautiful thing, brothers and sisters, but I tell you this also, whether you married or not married, when you begin to obsess with sex, it clouds your mind, it clouds thinking. Because that's not what you're about. You're more than a penis. You're more than a vagina. Religion is trying to teach you that you are gods, that you are a child of God. Do you think God is somewhere thinking about who he's going to bang? Or if God is a woman, who she going to bang tomorrow? It's, that's not what it's about. Sex is just a tool used for reproduction. And then you must nurture that life that you produce so that you can have eternal life if there is such thing. But the bottom line, and see, I want to go ahead and bring our little talk to conclusion. All of these people, they have two more excuses for their nasty, vile behaviors. Copying the racist European Caucasian. That might be part of their culture, but that is not you. Well, Africans do it. And I'm very sure that some Africans have practiced this. But at the same time, do you know if they have been conquered by white people somewhere? A lot of Africans are doing things that is unnatural. And you don't know that the white man was there and conquered them. And left them with these behaviors. At the same time, now listen. At the same time, just because Africans did this and Africans did that, don't mean everything they done was right. That's why you live in a new period of time because now we've come to the point where we know some things better than them. And we make a mistake trying to be like them. Some of them no longer exist. These Africans, these Egyptians, these people that y'all talk about and y'all praise. And the reason why you praise them because you don't know them. Because if you really knew them, you probably wouldn't like them. That's why it's good just to be who you are. A descendant of slaves born in America. What is wrong with that? You don't have no pride in yourself. You want to know about Egyptian history and Moorish history. And you don't even know black American history. Because if you really knew black American history and our struggle right here upon this wicked land, then you would be so proud of yourself. And once you break these final bonds of mental slavery, you will be able to outdo 
you will be able to create a civilization greater than Egypt, greater than the Moors. A civilization that encompasses all of the human family. And in time, and this is the bad news most other races don't like to hear, but in time, it all goes back to the black. But before they leave, they will be those, these people under your leadership, under your guidance, will experience the heaven talked about in Quran and the Bible. But all Africans did not do everything right. They had error also. You will copy Africans. There are some Africans that believe in human sacrifice to their gods. You will murder somebody and sacrifice them to God. Some Africans drink blood. Some Africans are cannibals. They eat other black folks. <laughs> some of y'all do that in different ways. That's what this discussion is about. <laughs> some Africans believe if you have sex with an infant, it can cure AIDS. There are all kinds of beliefs and customs and things that ancient blacks and some of these Africans right now that they practice, that ain't right. That's why it takes a new knowledge, new understanding to break all this ignorance. It's time that it all is exposed and it comes to, and it goes as part of the past and bring, this is something that is new. But it ain't for everybody because some of y'all just nasty and filthy and vile. Your mind is corrupt. You've been living in the pig pen for so long, you become a swine yourself. And then, why are you so upset with me talking about how nasty and yucky and disgusting that you are? If you're so proud, because deep down inside, you know that's nasty. No matter how you talk about it, no matter how you try to clean it up, you can't make urine clean. You can't make feces clean. You can't make a butt, an anus clean. That's where your that's where your body eliminates filth, your waste products, and you licking and lapping and in, with a smile on your face. But at the same time. This is the ironic thing about it. At the same time, if somebody offered you some water and they got it out of a toilet, you'd be like, oh, that's nasty. You just had your a penis in your mouth. You just had your tongue in a vagina or an or a anus. So how is drinking water out of, out of a toilet nasty? Well, that's, that's where you've been in something that's worse because that toilet is cleaner than where you've just been. And I also like to say this, while they bragging about their, their freakishness, their sexual perversion, being a pervert, abnormal, they talk about how good being in filth is. But they don't want to tell you about the downside. Y'all know what I'm saying? The downside? The penis was not meant to be sucked on. So now you have a rise in what they call erectile dysfunction. Because the penis was not meant to be pulled and sucked on the way the things that y'all do. And also, there's a rise in prostate cancer. Because the prostate is overworked because y'all can't stop. So that prostate gland in the male becomes injured. And once it becomes injured, it opens the prostate. It makes it vulnerable to, to disease. You don't know that. You think there's a consequence. There's a consequence from playing in filth. Why do you think you have to take a bath? Why do you think you have to be clean? Because if you're not, you don't take a bath, you don't try to be clean, then you open up your body to viruses, 
cancers to sickness. And what y'all doing is sickness. The vagina was not meant to be sucked and licked and all this stuff that y'all do. And y'all take these plastic parts and y'all, you, you turn things up. And you don't even know what you're doing. The vagina is supposed to have a certain amount of wetness. It's supposed to be self-cleansing. But you licking and lapping, you licking all the all the 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 uh, fluids that the vagina makes in order to clean itself, and you drinking it like it's some like it's Kool Aid. Oh, woo, 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 y'all make me oh y'all make me shiver, and y'all lick the anus, and you put penis in the anus and all kinds of plastic pieces in the anus. But anybody in in the health, matter of fact, anybody who is part of the of, of, of healthcare, all the things I'm telling y'all, they will tell you that it is true. It's not popular. That's why they're not gonna tell you because they want you playing around in filth. They want you stupid. But a good doctor or even a good nurse, they go, they'll tell you. You can't keep messing with the anus like that. The anus was not meant, the anus is not a vagina. It was not meant to open up and do the thing that y'all trying to make it to do. So pretty soon, those, the muscles of the anus begin to get weak. And the muscles of the anus get so weak that some of y'all can't even hold your feces no, no more. You have to start wearing diapers. If you notice, the rise in diapers for, for grown people it's rising. That's telling you something. Women are having more woman problems. That's telling you something. Men are having more men sexually related problems. That's telling you something because you are a freak. And in the end, you're going to pay to be a freak. So if that's how you want to go out, you having fun and seeking pleasure, then you do that. But you have been warned. And when you're sitting in a chair. And I'm looking at you. And I can see that the imprint of that diaper. The only thing I can tell you is. I'm not going to tell you nothing. But in the back of your mind. It's going to look like. I'm saying I told you so. But you didn't want to listen. But that's how we are. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. That black people. It's easy for them to go in the wrong direction. Hard as hell to get them to go in the right direction. That's how we are. Because we are so loyal to this to these racist Caucasian people and we love them because they give us nothing because they don't give a dang about us. This is a way of life. We believe everything they teach us. Even some of y'all so-called black power folks. You believe as long as you can do your filth. You said, well, this is what they taught in anthropology. anthropology. This is what they said. This is what the white man said. But see, I tell you this. And I'm going to go out on this note. There is something called common sense. If it don't make sense, and see, if you don't try to research and think on your own, you can't determine whether, whether something makes sense or don't make sense. You just go with the flow. And right now, that flow has taught you to be yucky, taught you to be so nasty. But at the same time, how can you call yourself a god and a goddess? A child of God licking a vagina, sucking on a penis in your mouth. And y'all Christians and Muslims, and y'all doing that same type of nasty stuff. That's sodomy. Some of you don't even know what sodomy is, but that's what it is. There is only one sex, brothers and sisters. Sex produces life. If it does not produce life, then it is not sex. It is hiding behind sex. It is freakishness. 
And the reason why I have taken the time to talk to us and the fictional Jesus and the fictional Muhammad or all our great leaders and teachers, many of us have come before us is to bring life and bring to us life abundantly. You want to have sex, have sex and learn what love is. How are you going to have sex? That's why you can't, you really don't feel nothing because you, you don't have no love. Who loves the black man and woman? You've never been loved before. Oh, that's what you talk about is old fashioned. It's old fashioned, but your marriage is, you can't make a marriage that lasts, can't hardly make it two years. But your grandparents, who's old fashioned, 30, 35 years, they've been married. You can't keep a boyfriend. You can't keep a girlfriend jumping from one person to another. But you live in new fashion. So maybe you need to take another look at old fashion. Maybe there was something there that can show you how to live better. But you so, you have been, you've been programmed. You have been, you become a sexual deviant. They keep booty in your face. And penis in your face. And booty in your face all the time. And you can't break the grip. Of the devil. And Satan. Even in church. You can't wait to get down. And that's where you're going to always stay. Stay down. So we need somebody. Or somebody's. To bring us a message to raise these who are and have become dead, lost, deaf, dumb, and blind, raise them from a dead state to life. And if you begin to break and stop believing in all this trash that we have been taught by the Europeans, then you begin to begin, then you begin to be able to converge. And understand your true nature. And your true nature is much higher than putting a penis in your mouth. And licking a vagina like it's a lollipop. That is so nasty, y'all. Woo! How can you be so proud? And really, you're not proud. You've just been tricked and you've been deceived. Think about it. Think for yourself. Rationalize. Use common sense. Look at it. You, you and I, we're not nasty like this. That's their life. They forced us into this. You are beyond African. You are beyond black. You and I are the children of the universe. Babies, the progeny of what they say or what they call the most high. Thank you for listening. This your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And this was and is, think for yourself. This was and is, the Realities Temple on Earth.